As the jacket says, I've got a bad feeling about this. You'd think, right, that doing the new SL in sunny California and LA would be the best idea possible. And this is the only day it's rained on the entire freaking press trip. Anyway, there we are. We have lots of nice cars here, as you can see. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna give you a quick walk around of all the tracks we have here, and then we'll shoot off in our SL60 trip. Before I actually do that, our journey to get here to the US is pretty interesting. As always, started with coffee and a bit of IWC, some suspect packing by me, and the usual interesting stuff at the airport, four S's for the brown guy. If you know, you know. That means brown man. <laughs> After multiple rectal examinations, I finally made it on the aeroplane, where Jamie had an immense amount of difficulty drinking from a glass with too much ice. And then the long 10 to 11 hour journey to LA began. US Customs was surprisingly smooth and we finally found our hotel and proceeded to collapse before doing a US press trip tradition of going to the local cheesecake factory for some comfort food. And the next day, rain. So guys, what are you saying? Looking pretty fresh? Nice shave. Because today's episode is sponsored by Manscaped. You're confused because they usually talk to you about shaving under the waist and how much they care about your balls. Now they also care about your face, but in that order, balls first, face second. That's something I never thought I'd say on camera. Anyway, today's episode is sponsored by a new product. It's called the Plow 2.0. It is a hefty premium feeling razor, and it's actually really, really cool. We're gonna use it today. I'm gonna show you how it all works. Let me show you the plow. So if you're a fan of single blade close shaves, this is the shaver for you. This is a new single blade double-edged razor, so you can use both sides of the blade you have to unscrew the very hefty feeling handle it feels lovely feels very premium and then you pop in one of these manscaped double razor blades and you get a properly close and kind of old-fashioned shave which is really nice i really like the size and weight of it and how kind of premium it feels look at that it's got a lovely gunmetal finish to it it's fantastic it really uh yeah it's a premium feeling product of course if you go on manscaped's peak hygiene plan you can get extra razors sent to you periodically as well and make sure you check out their Shed Travel Bag, which is brilliant. It's water resistance on the inside, and you can fit all of the different Manscaped products right in there. So guys, that's the Plow 2.0. Use my code, and for a limited time, you'll get 20% off and free shipping around the world. Please do support our sponsors, guys. Now back to the episode. Right, guys, let's have a look around here. We've got quite a few specs here, and luckily for us, the rain has stopped for about two milliseconds. Here's the first one, not unlike the uh, first car that we reviewed, so... Finished in Patagonia red. Obviously, these are all US cars, so you've got the little indicator bits and whatnot. Some differences in all the cars compared to what we've seen so far. We've got extended night pack on this one, so all the grill bits are in black chrome, as is the V8 by Turbo badge, as you can see there. It looks quite nice on certain specifications. The best one for that is, look at that. That is glorious, isn't it? White, red roof. It's perfect SL, and you can see with the extended night package, you get that. And it looks even better on the back, actually. Yeah. The AMG logo, the SL63 logo. That is a very, very nice specification indeed. Love that. So white and red traditionally always work so well with SL, working really good with this generation as well. Sun yellow is a new one. And I didn't think it worked in the pictures I saw. It's a little bit better in person. Why didn't they do solar beam yellow? Maybe they knew the sun wasn't coming. I don't know. Um, it's just a flat yellow like you saw on the A35. It works a bit better if you have the carbon ceramics. Imagine it without carbon ceramics and with the red brakes or the yellow ones, and it's gonna look pretty god awful. So, air the side of caution when it comes to sun yellow. But I'll tell you one color that is absolutely stunning in person, the new Hyper Blue. Look at that. That is absolutely stunning. What a glory, it's a very, very deep metallic. It's gorgeous, it almost looks like it could be some kind of a chroma flare wrap. It works really well with the lovely multi-spokes. Not sure why AMG are going with the uh, logo across the uh, center caps, but it is what it is. It's a bit different for SL, but that hyper blue with the chrome bits. 
this is where you get then a more luxurious spec versus the more sporty one that we saw in the white cars. So this is very nice. Um, inside as well, it's very like my back in there. Don't know if you can see that, Jamie. So it's, it's a much more luxurious looking SL and this one is a 55. So we do have a choice of 55s and 63s. We have actually gone for the SL63. There is no more classic SL specification than silver with black and red. This is perfect. It is of course the top dog spec of the 63 as well. 585 brake horsepower, 060 in, probably not 3.6 seconds in this weather, but fast enough. Let me start it for you. Let's get on the run and let's see. This is a scenario that's gonna hit a lot of us when we're owning this car. Yes, it's a top down car, but it also needs to be good in this kind of weather, being a formatic. So let's see what the SL is like. As discussed, weather absolutely awful here in LA, but that's fine because this is a formatic car, and the roof is something that a lot of us have been worried about. Being a soft top, getting rid of the hard top barrier roof, is it going to be quiet enough? It's chucking it down at the moment, and it's actually nice and quiet in here, so that's great. But we're going to start off. Let's start off with an AMG Motion start. Let's hear again what this car sounds like because it sounds brilliant. A pure combustion V8 sports car again from AMG. Honestly, something that I didn't think that we would be saying leading into 2022. So as an AMG fan, I absolutely could not be happier right now. So let's turn this on. sounds like an absolute animal. You get brilliant welcome screen here in the steering wheel in both screens. It's great. This is the first time I'm driving the SL. Uh, we found a good road here to drive it down. Uh, Jamie's done all the driving up until now, so this is my first drive. So I can share with you what my first 100 yards impression of this car is going to be like. I'm going to keep it in comfort to begin with, exhaust on, or else let's see what the new SL is like. Listen to that in comfort mode as well. Gosh, I wasn't expecting that. That sounds wonderful. Listen to this, guys. Wow. I need to clarify, actually, if this is Euro spec exhaust or American, but that V8 rumble, it's so glorious. It reminds me of the old days of AMG. And again, I'll stress, this is just comfort mode with the exhaust on. It sounds lovely. This engine's been around since 2015 and it's one of the great modern engines. It feels so much like a naturally aspirated engine. Um, it's been used in AMG's motorsport division as well. So you know that it is just one of the most special engines we've ever had from AMG. It sounds amazing. The throttle response is fantastic. I'm so glad that it survives here in the new SL in pure combustion form because I was convinced that they were going to add some kind of hybrid element to it and they haven't. Right, guys, we're going to try a quick launch control now. It's really wet, but let's see what happens. Oh, it got the traction this time. It got the traction. Let's see what we got. It's going to track pace. Our Insta 360 camera can show us the speed as well. Look at that. 3.5 seconds in the wet. Of course, guys, you remember that the quoted time is 3.6 in perfect conditions by AMG. We're doing 3.5 in the wet, puddles, terrible roads. I can't wait to see what is the SL63 gonna do in the dry. Amazing. Again, initial impression, suspension seems quite firm. Of course, we have AMG's active ride control suspension, which is debuting here in the SL, which has got hydraulic um, actuators to control the amount of body roll that you have in the car, so it's a first within the 63. 55 gets a standard steel setup with uh, pressure regulating valves on each 
damper. But this feels nice and firm. I had this impression coming into the car and reading the press release that it was going to be a bit of a wallowy luxury car in terms of the suspension, but it's not. It's all like that. Um, even sitting in the passenger seat, I was very aware of what the road surface was like and indeed even like the steering inputs that are being given. So all very good signs for an AMG that's trying also to be a sports car. That duality in the SL is so important. It's got to have the 300 SL's DNA in terms of sports cars and have the luxury side that we talked about being built up later in the SL's life. All right, let's drive a little bit faster now, try and get an idea of what's going on. Now I'm coming at this first drive from the viewpoint of, first and foremost, an AMG GT driver having had you know eight of them. So I'm well placed to tell you what this is like versus that. And then secondly, from the point of view, I think of a C63, S Coupe driver, because I kind of see the SL slotting in between those two cars, which is a very difficult place to live. And immediately, what I can tell you is, even in comfort mode, the power delivery, look at this. It's effortless. I'm barely using, I don't know, 20, 30% of the, of the throttle. Um, obviously, Formatic helping so much in this regard. And that's the first major difference you feel versus AMG GT, where in this type of weather, you know, that car, particularly in something like GTR, uh, kind of becomes unusable. In the SL, it just doesn't even think about it. It's actually very reminiscent of how usable the GT63S was um, in this type of weather, where you just don't even think about it. You just jump in and you drive because you have complete confidence. Now, I'm in Sport Plus at the moment, and steering is tightened up. The engine sounds fantastic. Getting some loads of pops and bangs out the back. Oh my god, the SL is back! This is a lot more like AMG GT. But again, it's, it's so different with the Formatic. Particularly in this kind, my brain can't get over the fact that I'm driving a car that looks like the AMG GT, but effortless in this kind of weather. And indeed, you know, C63, it does feel a bit more like C, I think, when it comes to the handling aspect, which isn't a bad thing. The C is a great handling car. But it, it just doesn't have that type of light-footedness that the GT does as a two-door sports coupe. But I think you're kind of expecting that because this is going to fulfill some of the role of, say, S Coupe, the S63, that no longer will be with us. The steering is great. I can really feel the rear wheel steel working hard. It feels like it's on rails in corners like this. Who said you can't have fun in California in the rain driving a car like this? This is awesome. Speed, brilliant, the handling, a lot better than I expected it was going to be for a car that's larger than the GT, it's got the Formatic in there, it's got so much tech that you can see in here, so a really good start. This is an AMG review, so we must of course acknowledge sound, and the sound is brilliant, and you don't need to have it in Sports Plus, like I showed you earlier. If you do, you get some amazing pops and bangs. It reminds me of the original AMG GT, obviously muted since, but that same type of wonderful rumble and the ability to play it like a musical instrument like you could in the past. Listen to that. <laughs> One of the things I love in the interior, like you're doing the temperature just like in the S-Class and your vents change colour to either hot or cold. Little things like that are fantastic. Now, uh, another little thing that I love is your driver's zone, it's fantastic. A, you've got the cloak around it, which I think is so important for a digital screen to maintain some of that retro flair that makes cars like the old SL so great. And of course, the hyper analog vents here with the ambient lighting really help that cause as well. But the actual uh, display itself and the content within it, like if we go into manual and we start shifting and you see the rev build up and how it tells you that you need to shift it's fantastic. This is so well done and it's so clear to the driver. Uh, it's not just for show. Um, it is beautiful, of course, the textures that AMG use, as we've always seen in the past. So clear, so, so gorgeous for a digital screen. But in actual usage as well, fantastic. Of course, you can change then to the other sport display, the red one, which is quite good. You get the uh, driving modes that you can see on the side there. You can change to the classic display. 
which is more traditional Mercedes-Benz, the understated one if you want less information, and of course the amazing Super Sport display, which is debuting here in the SL, which looks incredible. Uh, of course, that's AMG specific completely. Speaking of driving modes, when you go into the AMG section here, you get a load of options, and it's so easy to swipe and choose what you want, either for your individual mode or within Comfort or Sport or Sport Plus. So well done, so well animated again, so easy to use, and I love that element. Now, I've got the current Sport Plus, which means Sport Plus suspension as well, and it's firm. It's kind of AMG GT firm, which I like, because you can have that if you want it. We had a couple of stops just to see, you know, what's the 360 degree camera like, which was brilliant on here. I was really shocked to see just how how well detailed the cameras were, first of all, how high fidelity it all was, how you could see so much, the kind of the barriers, the virtual barriers around the car, etc. Um, that translates into, for example, using the navigation, the inbuilt one in MBUX, where you can see your car and the specification of your car there in the middle, driving around the city. Again, so fantastic. The other thing I really appreciate is the heads-up display. Again, something I'm not used to as a GT driver. You get that extra bit of luxury in tech within the SL. I would like to drive it in a drier environment to get a better idea of the handling. It's very difficult to do that today, but it's certainly telling me how flat the can actually corner. That anti-roll system by AMG is fantastic. I've got all my luggage flying around in the back. The active anti-roll system within this working really well, really corners quite flatly with the rear wheel steer is fantastic. So really the SL has come along so far. Before it was a car that was a little bit redundant. Now it feels to me like an AMG GT Roadster done right. It drives better than the GT Roadster, the steering far better, and I must stress that. AMG saying that it's more rigid than the GT Roadster is absolutely true. I hated the GTR Roadster, I still do. This is very different to that, and it's just more enjoyable because it is a tool for a purpose. The SL has been built from the ground up as a Roadster, and I can really feel that it's not a compromise in any way. It's doing a roadster job as a sports car, and that's what it was meant to do. My question for a future full review is, what is the SL55 going to be like in comparison to this ballistic 63? I mean, the speed on this thing is incredible. Um, I'd be happier, I think, with a car with even less power. I think the SL55 is going to be a real sweet spot, so we'll leave that for the full review. I also want to see, again, what do these cars handle like in the dry? What kind of launch control time are we going to get in the dry when it's performed so amazingly here in the wet? I'm excited to see that. And as a customer, I'm actually excited about a new AMG that's coming out. And I haven't said that for a long, long time. I haven't thought that about an AMG product for a long, long time. So if you're musing over getting, getting one of these and you're worried that the previous GT, etc., are more exciting, from what I've seen in this car, and please bear in mind that I don't know whether this is Euro spec or not, it might just be USA spec, this car feels as exciting as those old cars uh, in terms of AMG emotion, in terms of the huge amount of AMG flavor and DNA we get inside and outside. It's a real winner, and I would absolutely recommend this based on this first drive. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. It's been tricky filming for us here in a bizarrely wet Los Angeles, but I'm okay with it because it's shown just how capable the SL is even with the roof closed, even in the rain. It's giving you all the AMG emotion that you could ever want, even in this scenario. So if you've enjoyed this first drive of the SL, please do like, and most of all, subscribe to RBR. That's the most important thing. Really appreciate it if you do that. And I'll see you guys next time. I've got about half an hour to go, and uh, I think I'm gonna enjoy this car a little bit more. See ya.